and here they come. On the left in the white tracksuit top, the Spurs from the first division. And on the right, Aston Villa from the third. And welcome to the Football League Cup final, a competition that has the reputation for all that is dramatic. This year, the drama came at the very end of a hard and relentless match. And in the studio to talk about it later, Martin Chivers of Spurs and Chico Hamilton of Aston Villa with them, Jimmy Hill. But first, let's get back to Wembley with its 100,000 crowd, a crowd that included Her Royal Highness Princess Alexandra. wearing a coat of pink is presented to the Spurs and their skipper Alan Murray with her Mr. Lynn Shipman president of the Football League Martin Peters and Steve Perriman at 19 the youngest player ever to play in a Football League Cup final at Wembley Pat Jennings the goalkeeper and Joe Kinnear Cyril Knowles The moment when the muscles need flexing. And now the turn of Aston Villa. And surely all the neutrals in the stadium this afternoon must be on the side of the underdogs, although Villa would never see themselves as underdogs. Here's Brian Godfrey, their skipper, presenting Chico Hamilton and Pat McMahon, Willie Anderson. Man who was with Manchester United. There they go. Away we go with Aston Villa. First, the Aston Villa team, unchanged from the side that lost at Berry last week. David Gibson, a really uh, experienced substitute, knows what Wembley is all about. Lockhead, the number nine, who uh, came here with Leicester and lost tremendously good seasons with Burnley. It took a time, in fact, to settle down at Villa and now is really in good scoring form for them. Meanwhile, Tottenham, with so much first division experience, one of the sweetest moving sides in the first division at the moment, but no Mike England at five. His ankle injury won't permit him to play. Peter Collins, as we say, was there at number five for them. And their skipper, of course, Alan Mallory, the man who skippered England recently in Malta. Pat Partridge on the left, the linesman. Jim Finney, the centre, the referee. And Mr Morgan of Rotherham. So Aston Villa get the 1971 Football League Cup final underway in their claret shirts with the blue sleeves, defending the goal now to our left. Here's Kinnear, allowing that to go into touch for a throw to Tottenham Hotspur. Spurs, who've appeared in five FA Cup finals and won the lot. Villa, who've appeared in seven and uh, nine, rather, and won seven of them. So two sides with tremendous cup-fighting traditions here at Wembley this afternoon. Here's Lockhead. And Hamilton looking to get in behind Knowles, but Knowles booting that one to the safety of the crowd. Always tense moments, and tension at Wembley can kill a side. It's uh, the side that can settle down quickest and play good, relaxed football. McMahon, a nice little flick there for Anderson. Spurs under pressure right away. But a goal kick. Well, certainly a warning there for Tottenham in the opening minute of this game, with Pat McMahon playing a beautiful little ball here for the man, Willie Anderson. And Pat Jennings... 
who had a sore neck after a collision at Newcastle last week, passed fit during the week. 27 caps for Northern Ireland, a lot of experience. Gilzean quick to pounce on that loose one for Tottenham Hotspur going past. Now Chivers, can he get a shot in? Peters, can he get a shot in? Peters, in fact, trying one of those little surgeon's knife shots, that you might call them, with just a little gap in that goal, and he looked to find it, as he did once here so memorably against Scotland for England. But that time it didn't come off. McMahon stopped by Knowles. Godfrey, McMahon. Hamilton. Good looking cross there by Hamilton. Lockhead hoping to get on the end of it. Anderson. Kinnear coming towards him, giving him no room, no time. Aitken putting that one across, and Lockhead's looking for it with his head. My goodness, that was nearly there. Not it away, in fact, by Knowles. And Spurs in defence were in a terrible tangle there for a moment. Hamilton going out to take the corner. Well, that's the closest we've come to a goal. It'll give Villa all sorts of encouragement. Knowles getting that one away. Chivers. Leaving it for his skipper, Mullery. Neighbour with a chance ahead of him to make some room. Knowles going down the left for it. And Bradley putting it into touch for another throw to Tottenham. Perryman. And Peters trying to hope to get on the end of this one. Chivers is there too. And this time nodded away by Charlie Aitken. Charlie Aitken, longest serving player at the Villa. 12 years he's been there under five managers. Never asked for a transfer. That's my sort of player. Neighbour with the corner. Now can Chivers turn that in? He can indeed, but it came off Tyler. Neighbour again, trying a little too much, and Charlie Aitken again there for the Villa. Hamilton to McMahon. Peters cutting that one out, not a very good pass by McMahon. Gives Spurs possession with Gilzee. Most arrogant touch there by Alan Gilzee, and a shot that's off the target. make the running in this game McMahon taking it up to Hamilton two big strong young strikers for them Hamilton a good run by him across that Spurs goal plucked like a cherry off a tree from Hamilton Neighbour to Perryman youngest player on the field but there's so much authority about him and he finds his skipper Mallory now a good little cross by Mallory Peters going in neighbors there too and so too is Aitken for Aston Villa Aitken once more perhaps a little lucky there to find Hamilton and a too strong challenge there a wild challenge by Perriman Jim Finney missing absolutely nothing So half an hour gone, no score. And Keith Bradley with the kick for Aston Villa. Hamilton trying to turn it in for Godfrey. Play on, says the referee. That was no foul by Peters. I don't think there'd be many Villa supporters who would agree with him. Stevie Perriman. Oh, and Chivers for once been allowed a yard or two by Turnbull. And Chivers making good use of it too. Oh, tried a little one-two with Gilzee, which didn't come off. Now Perryman once more. Again the little chip to look for Chivers. A little turn by Chivers for Kinnear of all people. And again that Villa defence looking very cool deep in their own penalty area. 
is with Tyler. To Bruce Rioc. Good pass there by Rioc to find Hamilton. Well, that fell off Godfrey, but it's uh, Turnbull. Godfrey again. Well, Brian Godfrey has a cross with Lockhead on the other end of it. Lockhead getting up well. And Kinnear went charging into him along with uh, Peter Collins. The threat was there. Lockhead at the uh, far post is always a danger signal. Can you notice right up there in that Spurs penalty area, the number three. And it's going to be Willie Anderson with a corner for Aston Villa. Hard and low. My goodness, that nearly got through. Veal, in fact, getting ahead to it. Anderson again. Teasing and taunting, and this time it's Mullery's head, and again not very far away. Now it's Collins' head, again not very far away. Pat McMahon. Villa looking very dangerous indeed. And Knowles forced to give away the corner. <laughs> Hamilton with it. And a low and a hard one. Knowles, this one nodding it clear as far as Jimmy Neighbour. Just look at Hamilton tackling back on Neighbour as well. Forcing Neighbour into that error too. <laughs> Chivers. Again, the ball played off first time, didn't come off for Spurs. And now to Beal. Perryman. Yulzine trying to play it back to Perryman, succeeding. Knowles with neighbour outside him. Yulzine at the far side, Peters too. Mullery there looking to belt it. And a ricochet, in fact, off Martin Peters into the arms of uh, John Dunn. And so Pat McMahon. Bruce Rioc. And a fairly aimless ball, I must say, there by Rioc. Beal keeping it in play. Turnbull, very positive indeed there, getting before Chivers. McMahon, beautiful play there by McMahon. Good break here by uh, Aston Villa. Hamilton going past Knowles. But not the second time, but Knowles forced to give away the corner. A good, swift and a sure-looking strike there by the Villa. McMahon and Hamilton. Hamilton with the corner. Curling it in low again, straight for Knowles by that near post. Bradley. Hamilton. Bradley. Gilzine should get ahead to that one. Into injury time at the end of this first half. Knowles, only as far as Godfrey. And again, Villa keeping this pressure on the Spurs. Rioc. Challenged by Mallory, but finding Aitken. Peters this time to get it away, and again, not very far. But Godfrey's reflex header going there for Jennings. Peters. Knowles. Bradley. 
Godfrey. Referee Jim Finney getting his sign from the linesman that as far as they're concerned, 45 minutes is up. But Aitken. And the whistle, in fact, goes for half-time. Well done for the Aston Villa. Here's Vic Crow, the manager, leading the way for them. He must be mightily pleased with the way his side has shaped against Spurs in the first half. Alan Gilzean, who's had the odd chance for Spurs, but really it hasn't come off for them in the first half. And a lot for Spurs to do in the second half. Andy Lockhead, a constant threat, a willing worker. So the half-time score in the Football League Cup final here at Wembley is Aston Villa nil, Spurs nil, and we'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes. So Spurs then preparing to kick off for the start of the second half, being held and deservedly held by third division Aston Villa. In the final of a tournament, of course, is used to its upsets. Two third division sides have already won this trophy here at Wembley, Queen's Park Rangers in 1967 and Swindon in 1969. So nil-nil, Spurs now defending the goal to our left and Hamilton for Aston Villa. Tyler turning almost effortlessly inside uh, Gilzean there, but now Beale finding Alan Gilzean. Back to Philip Beale. Again, that Spurs clockwork movement is clogged up again as Villa go away with Hamilton, but Hamilton in turn losing it into touch and a throw for Spurs by Cyril Knowles. A tournament that really has increased also in popularity year by year for the third successive year. The crowd here, meaning that more than two million people have seen the Football League Cup this season. Perryman now, Collins and Beal and in goes Bradley very quickly and Noel somehow keeping that ball in play and almost putting it there in fact putting it in the path of Lockhead and now Hamilton and Hamilton with a shot oh just flashed me over that first crossbar there really wasn't more than a couple of inches to spare in that one Made out of nothing, really, when Knowles lost it over on the touchline to Lockhead. And Hamilton really motored into that Spurs penalty area. In fact, it looked for one moment as though it might just dip underneath the Pat Jennings crossbar, but it didn't. And here is Jennings then with the goal kick for Spurs. Aitken winning it in the air and winning it well. Aitken again, getting the better of Gilzean, two Scots. Kinnear a long way back to Jennings. Joe Kinnear who played the game of his life, in fact, when Spurs beat Chelsea in the 67 FA final. Now Peters. Spurs badly needing a, the class of Peters to stamp itself on this game, but no signs of it yet, as McMahon takes it up again for third division Aston Villa. And Hamilton bursting through and with a little luck would have been completely through Kinnear then back to Jennings Hamilton who really has shown his strength and his acceleration twice already in this half Jivers and Mullery trying to pounce on it Riot going in hard and it must have gone off Riot for a throw to Tottenham Mullery with it Mullery having steeled at least half a dozen yards. I think Jim Finney might have settled for one or two, but half a dozen was too many, so Mullery's got to come back. Now Gilzean. Well, it might suit Spurs, because it's given Gilzean uh, possession. Mullery and Knowles going in there. Oh, they both missed it, both Aitken and Gilzean. So Mullery again with the throw. Perryman jinking and jerking about the place. Gilzean rolling on the floor. And so it's Kinnear. Down he goes from Rioc. So Tottenham's free kick.
Quickly taken by Peters, and Chivers was nearly there in for it. Chivers still going in, and Dunn bravely getting a fist to it. The old one-two that have caught first division sides out before, the quick free kick by Peters, Chivers fasting on the end of it, but he didn't quite catch out the Villa. Chivers with a long throw, Dunn waiting and watching it, and Gilzine also, but Aitken putting it behind. So a corner to Spurs. Aitken looks as though he got it in the side as he went for that one with uh, Gilzine. Charlie Aitken over 400 appearances for the Villa. He's not going to come off in a cup final fall, but Mallory not a very good corner by him. Straight to Bruce Rioch. And a long clearance by Rioch, turned off beautifully there by Hamilton for Anderson. That's the sort of thing that Spurs have been trying to do and failing. But Anderson now for the Villa. Hamilton. Lockett is right up there. So too is Rioch. And so was McMahon on the far side, but Peter stopped it getting to him, and so it's Neighbour. Mullery. And Gilzine at last in a bit of space. But not doing very much with it. And also almost getting themselves into trouble there as uh, one man cannon into another. Chivers fighting back hard. They're playing the player and not the ball. And Villa's free kick. Fred Turnbull to take it. Villa pushing there between Lockhead and Collins and Kinnear getting a foot to it. So Villa's throw. Anything, Villa, Villa looking even more dangerous in the early minutes of the second half than they did in the first. Anderson. And a goal kick. Bit of crowd behind that goal, hopefully cheering for a corner. But I should think Jim Finney was a good 50 yards closer to that incident than they were. And he's given the goal kick to the Spurs. All come down the M1 from the Midlands. Pat Jennings with the kick. Turnbull again beating Chivers in the air. Turnbull's done a good job for the Villa. Here's Chivers again, though, attacking him on the ground this time. Still in possession, Chivers. Gills in. Now Mallory! Will he hammer it? No! Again, that Villa defence closed in so quickly, but certainly the best-looking Spurs move for quite some time, and a corner for them. Both Chivers and Mallory were right in there at the death. Chivers moving so nimbly for a big man. Mallory with the corner. Collins right up on that Villa goal line. And Peters trying to get in and uh, nod it powerfully downwards. And Dunn to pick up the ball for a goal kick to Aston Villa. Lockhead bobbing and weaving there. Anderson also waiting for it. Collins beating Lockhead in the air. Bruce Rioch. Challenged by Perryman and Perryman obstructing him. Villa's free kick. Tyler to take it. And all the Villa big guns are up. Lockhead to turn it on. Spurs in trouble. Hamilton right there, waiting for each other. And the inquests that are going on in that Spurs defence. And quite rightly so. Peters was in the middle of it. Knowles was in the middle of it. Peel as well. And Kinnear to finally hack it away. Spurs so very nearly caught out there. And if they had only themselves to blame, here's the corner coming across. Peters this time, half getting it away. Godfrey doing very well indeed. Beal once more. Trying to coolly play himself out of trouble. Knowles, a long one away. That really was Spurs at their worst. And the understanding still isn't coming on. Murray and Gilzine both leaving that one to each other. Perryman. Peters quite easily beaten there by Aitken, and now Villa setting it up again. Hamilton, and this time Rioch through. Stopped beautifully though by Peel. 
Superb defence by Beale. My goodness, and Perryman then putting it away. After the challenge on uh, Pat Jennings, that seems to have uh, knocked him sideways. Sky is overcast. Wembley looking at its best with this capacity crowd. Anderson then taking the throw. Hamilton, so lively, so menacing. Another throw to the villa. Bruce Rioch to take the throw. Riding Anderson. And now Hamilton. Good looking cross there by Hamilton. Lock it at the far side. Jennings trying to fist it away, Collins put him under pressure, and Collins finally getting him out of trouble as well. Spurs really are up against it now. Throw to them on the far side, Knowles with it. Neighbour. Ryan flagging on the far side. For a free kick to Tottenham. <laughs> Chivers coming hard for that one and getting it and finding Gills in. There goes Peters after it as well, but Tyler getting there first, calmly back to Dunn. Wrapped up very well in that back four, Brian Tyler, this afternoon. Knowles. Now Chivers. Even the short passes, they don't seem to be able to play accurately in our Spurs at the moment. Mullery. Chivers. Gilzee. Mullery again, going hard in on that one. Peters, he couldn't control it, but Riot could. Brought down by Kinnear. <laughs> Villa this time trying to steal a few yards, and uh, it's going to be Tyler to take the kick. but Perryman was there this time. Calm assurance of that youngster. Oh, but a little too calm, because he's let Rioch through. Down goes Jennings. Oh, and in goes Lockhead, and Jennings grabbing that at the second goal. Having a war of words, too, with Kinnear. I think Kinnear thinking that Lockhead went in a too little vigorously on uh, Jennings, and in fact, it's a free kick for the Spurs. Superb save, though, by Jennings. Uh, Steve Perryman just a little too casual, which led up to it. Aitken beating Gilzean in the air. Can't recall a first division match when Gilzean has so often been beaten in the air, as he has by Aitken this afternoon. Collins winning that one. Still in play. Bradley to Godfrey. Turn inside by Lockhead, Philip Beale, oh, and then Kinnear. But Spurs still under pressure with Villa in possession with Anderson. And was that out of play? My goodness! Finally put behind by uh, Beale, but I think that must have been out of play before. Indeed it was, because Jennings coming to this side of the goal to take the goal kick. The linesman on the far side with his flag up. But again, this snaky running and snaky striking of uh, Willie Anderson with Lockhead and Rioch and Hamilton and McMahon all waiting. Jimmers getting that one in the air, but the faithful Turnbull there again. My goodness, uh, Dunn was taking no chances there. He uh, wasn't prepared to take it back into the penalty area where he could use his hands. Tyler. Look 
McMahon, a really arresting run there by McMahon. And Kinnear, oh, very coolly indeed, back into the arms of Jennings. But what a great run by Pat McMahon. Gilzee. Between Godfrey's legs, but uh, it seems whenever you beat one Villa player, there's always another one to cover up for him. Now Peters. To Gilzee. And there's Turnbull going in. Almost as though his life depended on it. Claiming, in fact, that the ball last came off Gilzean, but uh, Jim Finney says no. Spurs throw. Perriman. Neva. Kinnear and Hamilton. Kinnear hitting it sideways there for Mullery. Beal. Chivers looking for it with his head, Gilzean, this must be a chance for Spurs, as Neva goes in, Chivers, there it is, Martin Chivers, Spurs are ahead, and they really don't deserve to be, what a tragic blow for the Villa, and what a relief for Spurs, for them and for their supporters, Martin Chivers, putting them into the lead, after that rebound had uh, come so invitingly for him, putting Spurs ahead now with 11 minutes to go. So Martin Chivers, his 29th goal of the season. scoreline really that bears no resemblance to the way this game has gone but now Spurs away again Knowles, a flick outside for Neva who did so much in the build-up last time Gilzean oh a save an instinctive save by Dunn well if you ask John Dunn how he saved that he'd never know somehow that cannoned off his legs but Villa deserved a bit of luck Villa's throw. Now, Brian Godfrey, this is where the true test of captaincy comes out. And here he goes, Brian Godfrey. McMahon to Hamilton. Godfrey again, good play by Villa. McMahon. Stopped by Beale and good defence by him. Now there's some real challenge about the game as Mullery takes it up for Tottenham. To Jimmy Neighbour. Gilzean. And here's Kinnear. Peters begging for it on this side of the field. Neighbour trying to hammer it in and cannoning off Aitken. Perriman. Knowles. Perriman. Mullery. Chivers. Turned across there, Peters looking for it, Gilzean was behind him, Mullery. Mullery again for Gilzean. Oh, some wild kicking there again by Godfrey. Right under the eyes of the linesman too, Perriman going hard in on this one. And John Dunn for the Villa. Hamilton to McMahon. Now they are stopping and looking, and Spurs are attacking a much quicker as Chivers now. Good control by Chivers. And he's done it again, Martin Chivers. Oh, what a goal by Chivers. Oh, what a tremendous goal. All the control and the cheek and the finishing by Martin Chivers, 2-0. goal but had the lot Chivers who only a year ago the Spurs crowd couldn't get off his back he couldn't recover from a bad knee injury and they were on to him the whole time his comeback has been one of the great stories of the season Marty Chivers to an England cap and now two goals in a Wembley final
And they come from Tottenham. Godfrey. What a cruel place Wembley can be, and it has been this afternoon for the Villa. Free kick. Well, if you're going to strike killer blows, I suppose you want to strike them in the last ten minutes. Spurs now two up, with something like seven minutes to go. Well, and I think there's some relief in that Tottenham bench as well. Gilzean to flick it on, Mullery looking for it, but Riot to put it back to Dunn. Tyler. And Hamilton, he couldn't keep it in, it went out. Billy Nicholson, third from the left as you look at it there, sitting bolt upright, showing none of his feelings. Inscrutable face of Billy Nick. Peters. For the last five minutes, Spurs have looked themselves, and it's been the only time in the match when they have. Tyler cutting that one out from Neighbour quite easily. Now Bradley. Perryman, oh, he put that straight for Rioch. And now can Rioch, oh, beautiful play by Rioch. Oh, bad luck, Rioch. That was a great run by the Villa player. Completely outstripping Philip Beale, who's down injured. And Beale by no means is a slouch. Well, it's that sort of skill that makes Bruce Rioch worth the £100,000 that Villa paid for him from Luton Town. Philip Beale looks as though he's all right again, a real star in that Spurs defence. Beale has played superbly. Here's the corner for the Villa. Everybody up there, including Turnbull. McMahon turning it back there, Godfrey turning it in, and it's Chivers. And that's gone off a Villa player for a throw to Spurs. Aitken hopefully taking it, but that quite clearly came off a Villa player. to Dunn. Kinnear. Chivers. Nice deft touch again by Chivers. He's looking for his hat-trick as Chivers. On and on. And now Peters to hammer it. Now Chivers, is this the hat-trick? No. side of Knowles. Here's Willie Anderson. Nice little cross there, but too hard for Andy Lockhead, who at that moment had made a run towards the near post. Two minutes now of injury time. Aitken finding time still for a word with Gilzean, and Gilzean back. Now they're getting into real action there, and it's uh, Gilzean who nodded it on. But Tyler who gets it away for the Villa. Lockhead fastening on it, and the final whistle goes. Spurs have won the Football League Cup of 1971. Two goals by the number nine, Martin Chivers. Under they, after they were under pressure for so very long from Aston Villa. Here's... Billy Nicholson in the centre of that picture, manager of Victoria Spurs, the skipper Alan Mullery and the skipper Brian Godfrey. Spurs so long to find their form and congratulations there from Eddie Bailey, for Martin Jimmers and from Billy Nicholson as well, Cecil Poynton. 
He could hardly have thought a year ago when uh, it was a subject of so much barracking at White Hart Lane that it would have such a happy, happy ending. What a shot there between Bill Nicholson, the man who had faith in Martin Jimmers, the man who came back. So it'll be Alan Mallory then to get the Football League Cup from Her Royal Highness Princess Alexandra. A kiss for the cup. Two goals when all the worry lines were beginning to show on their faces. Here's Martin Peters and Cyril Knowles. And Wembley rising to Aston Villa. There's Sydney Whale, the Spurs chairman, having a word with Brian Godfrey as he saw a moment ago. Bruce Rioch. Keith Bradley, congratulations to the gallant losers, Aston Villa, and who would deny them that? faithful supporters of Aston Villa who really have supported this club heroically through the thin years of the 1960s giving vent to their feelings now in 1971 when their side so unlucky to be beaten at Wembley tremendous cheering for Aston Villa So the signboard spells it out. Congratulations to Spurs and to Billy Nicholson. But first of all, what did the Spurs manager think of Aston Villa's performance at Wembley yesterday? Well, I thought they did very well indeed. Until the last ten minutes, they were certainly not disgraced. In fact, uh, up till that time, they seemed to be gradually getting stronger and stronger. And they were giving us quite a lot of problems. In fact, uh, the two extreme wingers, Hamilton and Anderson, gave us quite a few problems in the first half. And then, uh, as the second half was progressing, uh, after Anderson had hit the crossbar with quite a good shot, their midfield players seemed to get stronger too. Mm. Uh, but when we got our goal, then that lifted us sky high. And after that, we could have got two or three. And, uh, of course, it was understandable, I think, under the circumstances that Villa just faded away but they were certainly not disgraced in this game today what about your own players uh, performances that particularly impress you today or the way in which the team came on top after a difficult ride well I don't like to talk too much about individuals but I think I must do today and I must say that Martin Chivers was a very powerful player for us uh, so much just to say that he won the game for Tottenham today which of course takes us on nicely to Martin Chivers and I got an instant reaction from Martin yesterday on the first goal that really got Spurs on the way to victory. It was a good movement, and, you know, I think before the goal, it, uh, I thought Jimmy might, it would have got a good shot in, as he did, and the goalkeeper, <clears throat> I think it hit his uh, legs, I'm not sure, I think it hit his leg and came out, or his hand, and came out to me, and I couldn't believe my luck, because it was just me, the goal, and one defender, and then I didn't really blast it, I had to place it, but uh, those are the ones you dread missing, but uh, you expected to get them in. I was... I think, you know, I was bound to score, Ian. Since uh, the final whistle, have you thought back perhaps to a year ago when you were being barracked every week and you no, obviously must have wondered about... I just felt, 
on top of the world. The, the only problem I had out there was trying to find my, my mother. You know, <laughs> it's impossible at Wembley. I think. And did you I find just, her? No, I didn't. No, I, I just have to phone her up this evening. I was trying to wave to her. I hope she didn't pass out. She gets a bit uh, she? worked up at the games. Martin, thanks very much, mate. Thank, Thank you. you. Well done. Cheers. Here is Martin Chivers today, also Chico Hamilton of Aston Villa, and with the pair of them, Jimmy Hill. Well, Martin, I must ask you first, did you get your mother? No, uh, I didn't get to see her. I phoned up this morning. She had to rush back to Southampton. And so you still haven't uh, got to her and uh, calmed her down after all that excitement? No, it's, it's impossible <laughs> when you live away from home. Well, but she'll I'm be sure looking she's forward. settled down now. She'll be looking forward to that moment. Yesterday was quite a moment, obviously, for you. To have Bill Nicholson praise you like that, he's not the most lavish praiser in the business. What did you think of that? No, he's uh, done this on a couple of occasions. Last couple of weeks, he's gone uh, mad, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> don't very often get praise off of him. It's like lovely to see him smiling like that, I must say. Yes, you know, it is, yes. Come very often. We all were very pleased. Yeah. Was there a moment yesterday in that game? I mean, afterwards, Bill sort of said, well, we sort of had it under control, really. Was there a moment when you thought you might have lost that game and it would have been a Swindon Arsenal League Cup? Yes, there was a couple of uh, exciting moments, you know, one that uh, Chico Hamilton had, yeah. which just grazed the crossbar. Marvellous mm. shot. And uh, that might have turned the, turned the game. Why weren't Spurs quite in the rhythm that everybody expected? I think we might have been a bit uh, apprehensive. I think we were expected to win. Mm. There's no doubt about that. We were expected to win. And uh, the, it's, a, it's awkward, you see. You're afraid of giving something away. So we play, We tried to play very tight at the back, and, and we didn't uh, I think you've got to give a lot of credit to Aston Villa for the way in which they made the game difficult for you. Who impressed you in their side? Um, all the Fords. I think they're marvellous individuals. And... Uh, Chico Hamilton had a marvellous game, marvellous game, not because he's here, but uh, as I not said... Not because he's here and good-looking and got long hair. Uh, I mean, he did... Could he have did turned the game well with, that one, with it, that one shot. In fact, we can look at that performance now, and that very nasty moment for you, and wonderful moment for Chico, it would have been even better, when he grazed the crossbar with that, with that shot. But first of all, his contribution to the game. Uh, he's a left-footed player, basically. You are, aren't you, yes, Chico? Yes. Strong left foot, but here... He, he picks the ball up on the right wing, and there's Cyril Knowles against him, and he catches him out because Cyril doesn't expect him to go onto that supposedly weaker right foot, but that's not a bad cross off the right foot. Uh, there was a beautiful flick there. And when the ball comes back, that was a lovely first-time ball to Willie Anderson, shows the kind of attention he was getting, tight marking, there's Philip Beale at him there, but still keeping cool and getting the ball off. And uh, once or twice in the game yesterday, Martin, he had to be dealt with quite roughly to keep him under control. There's a, a rugby head tackle. And finally, one of the significant points in the game, the run. This time, he's got the ball on his favourite left foot. He can live it again now, Chico, and whack. And we can see there that it just grazes, scrapes the top of the bar. Uh, very sad. Can you tell me how you got that nickname, Chico? It, it was at Chelsea with Dave Sexton. I used to be a bit cheeky down there. You know. Are you still cheeky? Yes, I am, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does it help to be cheeky as a footballer, you think? I, yeah, I think at times, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. You went to South End, was it? Uh, on a, for how much did you sold to South End? Uh, 5,000. 5,000, how much there. did the villa pay for you? Uh, 40,000. 40,000 pounds? Yeah. Uh, how was it that you you left Chelsea? Was that were you too cheeky for Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, it was I was just in the reserves, you know. And I wanted first team football, mm -hmm. so I grabbed at the chance of going to Southend. Yeah. And I just was I thought start the fourth and work myself up, yeah. which I was there a season. I went to the second then. So much for you personally. What about these lads, these Tottenham lads yesterday? Who impressed you in that side? I think Martin. Uh, Quite a game, wasn't Quite it? Quite a game, yeah. Well, you, you know, he was laying them off well, you know, first yeah. time balls all the time, and he, he got the goals, you know, mm. which was very important. Well, apart from Martin, my man in the match was Philip Beale, who I thought hardly put a foot wrong at the back there, but uh, did you notice him particularly in the game? Not me, personally, no. I think it's, uh, it's hard for a forward to uh, assess the d defenders, you know. Yeah. You can see it from the stand, mm. maybe, but uh, I see it differently when I'm on the pitch. Yeah. It's not, not quite the same watching. Quite right, the magic moment for Martin Chivers there. We're going to see these two lovely goals yesterday. It, it must be one of the best moments in a footballer's life to sit there the day after and just enjoy what happened on that exciting occasion. Here it is now, camera behind the goal, number one goal coming up. 
And I think you earn the chance to have an easy shot at the end because you win that ball so well there among the Villa defenders. And Gilly doing his little bit of ma magic, Alan Gilzean. There's the shot. In fact, he does get a left hand to it. John Dunn, I think, does rather better there than people imagine. And a little side foot straight into the centre of the net, holding out. Well, that was a simple goal. The second was a complicated and a beautiful one. There's Martin Peters stealing the ball from McMahon. A very delicate chip from Mallory. And look at this control on the instep. Brought down under immediate control. But from then on, it takes courage and guts. And putting a leg in the way, doesn't matter who's kicking, you must hold on to the ball in order to give yourself the chance to put that shot just where it should be. Eddie Bailey was saying to me yesterday that you, he still thinks you don't really realise how strong you are and use your strength. Is there more to come from Martin Chivers? Perhaps. I, I don't know whether I've, uh, they're trying to build me up even bigger. Perhaps I can uh, How do they do bigger. that? Well, we do weights. I've done more weights at Tottenham yeah. than ever before. We never used to use weights at Southampton. Mm. And, I uh, hate to think of what size you're going to get uh, <laughs> the time that we No, we're I'm get just beginning this. to realise how big I am. Uh, yeah. This is uh, something Spurs have brought out in me. A warning for Bill Shankly next Saturday. You know, more weights and a bigger Martin Chivers. Chico, celebrations this afternoon when you get back? Um, we're going to a reception with the Lord Mayor, and there'll probably be 100,000. Yeah. You know, at least, I should imagine. Well, the Villa oh. fans, I think, have deserved some happy years. They've stuck yeah, loyalty to definitely. the club. You've given them a taste of it yesterday, and I think they should be proud of their team. Well done, Chico. Thank you. And Martin, well done to you. Thank you. And Spurs, in fact, so I'm told, will be meeting uh, their local mayor in Tottenham tomorrow. That should be quite a celebration, too. Well, that's it. Hope very much that you've enjoyed this ITV presentation of the Football League Cup final, the final with a real finish to it. The last word of all, of course, today must belong to the winners, the Spurs, and a tuneful word it is as well. <laughs>